Hello and welcome to our second video on terminal aerodrome forecasts. In this video we're going to talk about the elements of a TAF. And here are all the elements of a TAF. You don't have to memorize these in order, but you should know how to decode a TAF and understand some of the details as far as these elements. This is what a TAF looks like. As you can see it starts out with the station identifier. After that, it uh, has uh, can have one line or it can have many lines. This one has six lines. I've seen TAFs where they're just one line. TAFs sometimes start out with um, their identifier to tell you that it is a TAF. You may not always see that um, depending upon what website you get your weather information from. Sometimes that is uh, uh, truncated or uh, deleted from the start of the uh, TAF. Uh, you may see AMD at the beginning of the TAF to indicate that's amended. Once again, you don't always see that because that may be deleted from the beginning of the TAF depending upon the website that you use for flight planning. Also, you may see COR, which is a corrected forecast. Now, corrected forecasts can only be made the first half hour after issuance. That's when the meteorologist realized something is wrong with the forecast. Does not mean that uh, the weather conditions aren't representative. It may be just a typo or something like that. Next comes the station identifier. Station identifier is a four letter identifier. Of course, here on the 48 contiguous United States, it always starts with a K, but um, elsewhere it may start with another letter, depending upon the country or the region that they are making the forecast for. Next comes the date and time at which the forecast was produced. The first two numbers are the date of the month. The next four numbers are the time, and of course times are always in Zulu. Forecasts are usually issued a half hour before their scheduled issuance. So, of course, since forecasts come out at 0, 6, 12, and 18 Zulu, a half, half hour before each one of those, you should see the forecast. Next comes the valid period. Most times the valid period is a 24-hour valid period. Uh, the first two numbers are the date and the next two numbers are the time at which the forecast starts. And then after the slash, you'll have four numbers which represent the, once again, date and time that the forecast ends. Of course, all of the times are UTC. As I mentioned, 24-hour forecasts start at 0, 6, 12, and 18 Zulu. However, there are some airports, these are select international airports that need extended TAFs for long range flights. So their forecasts still start at 0, 6, 12, and 18 Zulu, but they run a little bit longer. They run about six more hours than your 24 hour TAF. That's a 30 hour TAF. Here are the locations. As you can see, these are large airports that typically have international air traffic. There are 32 airports that have 30-hour TAFs. As we mentioned earlier, TAFs may be amended, and if they are amended, you'll see a time period that's either less than 30 or 24 hours, depending upon the location. So if you see a TAF that's less than 24 hours, you know for a fact that that TAF has been amended. That's an important point because you may not always see the AMD at the beginning of the TAF. Remember, sometimes that is taken off depend upon, depending upon the website that you get your weather information. Now, the reason TAFs are amended, the National Weather Service has criteria and they follow that very carefully and very closely. The criteria has to do with ceilings, visibility, wind, weather phenomena, and that can be found in the resources that I gave you in video one, if you really want to look at that and need that information. But um, 
if there's weather conditions that um, are going to occur for more than 30 minutes and they meet the TAF criteria or the amendment criteria, then they will issue an amendment. Or if there's any new information that indicates uh, any changes that will be different and in a different category. Uh, and these categories, once again, can be found in those references. And the criteria have to do with, as I mentioned, ceiling visibility, weather, wind direction, wind speed, wind gusts, and also non-convective low-level wind shear. Sometimes at airports where there are no observations, meteorologists trying to make a forecast for that airport, a TAF, may use other uh, information surrounding the airport. In other words, they may use other METARs in the given area, also satellite information, radar information, to try and make a forecast for that given location. But they may not be able to update that since they don't know what's going on at the airport if the ASOS or AWAS machine is not reporting. So you'll see that sometimes uh, in the remarks or at the end of the TAF that amendments are not scheduled or nil amendment, meaning that they can't amend the forecast. And there are times when an airport for some reason uh, may not have weather observations. Uh, the station is closed perhaps, so they won't issue a TAF for that given location. So you'll see TAF and at the end of the TAF, nil. And that happens. Uh, that happened in New Orleans with uh, Hurricane Katrina when the ASOS station uh, went offline. They couldn't make TAFs for the airport. To make a TAF, once again, you need two consecutive METARs. And at airports that have uh, either part-time or no augmentation, um, especially if they're AO1s, then there's no precipitation reported at those given locations. And as a result, um, they will only issue amendments for clouds, visibility, and wind, but not for the different types of weather or precipitation. And that is our second video on TAFs. In the next video, we'll look at more weather elements.